Hi, I'm Shannon, and we're here with another episode of Cocktails and Creativity. Today, we are going to do paper mache, and I have a very special guest expert today whose name is Chris. Hello. And Trish is back. Hi. And another new friend, Kat. Hey. We are going to do <laughs> paper mache pumpkins. We are going to eat buffalo chicken meatballs. And we are going to drink maple bourbon apple cider. I want to go with kind of like a fall theme. Where it's also my favorite holiday, Halloween is, and my favorite part of the year. Please like thunder and storm every day. Um, so uh, we have the kind of fall themed, and this is a, a warm, Delicious. It's, yes, served yeah. warm uh, maple apple cider bourbon. The buffalo chicken meatballs. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> think of it as a healthy wing. Okay. 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 It's, gra it. it's ground chicken. Fine. There's no skin. There's no I'll take then. underneath. Yeah. Um, there's celery. There's celery. There's a vegetable on there. It's like a salad. I know. The recipe is totally down below. And I was very thoughtful of our craft because this business can get messy. So, um, everything's on a stick. And look, there's even straws. Look, mm, look, mom, no hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm ready to have you show us how to start this stuff. Ah. So I'm gonna get this guy out of the way. Okay. And then show us how to start making our forms. Yeah, just start wadding it up into little balls. So if we're doing a pumpkin, it's just a matter of a whole bunch of these, um, just kind of one on top of the other until it becomes unmanageable. <laughs> yeah, so Is that whatever where the tape that, comes out? That's where the tape comes okay. out. And the way I look at tape, we can do it different ways. I made, took a few off and already made strips, but um, yeah, just kind of wrap and you're using it to hold it together. Okay. So this is the, the part where it can be the most confusing. It's like, how is this gonna turn into a pumpkin? <laughs> you just have to trust building more and more. And if that means that you're gonna start small and you're gonna make a bunch of little ones, um, then that's really easy. If you wanna start getting a little bigger like the one we just saw, mm -hmm. just build up and build up. And um, But wadding it up at least gives it you know, a little bit more dense uh, thickness to it, that sort of thing. We had to trust like this in the needle felting episode too. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. You're yes, stabbing yes. at something hoping that it eventually will turn into yeah. things. Turn into right? something. Right, right, yeah. Exactly. It was like magic kind of. You know, that's why I was talking about, I mean, newspaper, and of course we were working with some smaller paper, but you know, the Sunday paper, bigger mm -hmm. sheets, you're gonna go a lot faster. And if you're using like brown craft paper, um, it's on a roll that you can get at a, a hobby store, then you can just take a big piece out and just crumple it up. So you can go a lot faster by the materials that you choose and um, want to expense. Of course, there's a number of places that you can get free newspaper and then you have to expense to go buy some craft paper. So it's just up to you and what you want to do and how you want to go about it. But I found this a works. lot of free paper. Good. I found a lot of free paper. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, and for the, you know, I'm using a wider roll here, but I think you're kind of getting it where you just kind of just start it and wrap. That's another way of doing it. Just uh, hardest part is finding the end of new tape. <laughs> yes! Oh my gosh! <laughs> and old masking tape, if it keeps on breaking on you, then don't use it because that's frustrating when you're trying to wrap something and the tape's not coming off or breaking. But, but basically, you can just wrap around like that and not to really think about it. So seven days later, we should get this thing up to uh, <laughs> 24 inch size or whatever you want to do. By the time it's Easter. Uh -huh. <laughs> so then you're halfway there. There's the bunny form, right? There you go. So. Turn into something else. And with, yes. the, with the tape, yes. how much of the newspaper do we want covered? Actually, like, do we want to see nothing but tape? No, you, it actually can be, I mean, tape does help as far as making it a little stronger, but what you have going on right now works. I think okay. ultimately the paper mache that we're gonna put over the top is what's gonna hold it all together okay. even more. Um, you just might have to put a little bit more on than that. So that is okay. a good way to well, save on a little money and not like, you know, just do a tape ball. Okay. Um, so 
So the tape is just to help keep the form. Yeah, it helps keep the form. And one thing I was doing, and on this, you can kind of see I have stripes going already, and I was kind of thinking of the shape of um, a pumpkin and the way that it's kind of uh, naturally built. And that helps me if, if I was to do another layer on this, which is mm -hmm. taking crumple, like, this is getting a little bit more advanced without getting too advanced, but it's just shaping um, some form to it that helps emulate that kind of oh. bump uh, move. Okay. This is where it takes a little bit more kind of sculpting sense to it, but just to get it taped down, kind of hold the form in a few pieces, and then your paper mache going over it will... What about the stem? The stem? The stem, uh, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. To make it a little stronger, what I, scissors, you could poke a little hole, wad up a little piece, even cardboard, cut out some cardboard pieces. If you wanna get the hot glue gun out, you could um, cut out little, you know, let's see, I have here as an example, little chunks like this, hot glue it together, and basically stick it in, and that doesn't look quite right, but you know. Okay, we didn't want to make you guys watch lots and lots and lots of balling and taping and all that. We just made you watch a little bit. So we finished those up, and now uh, Chris is going to show us how to do the application part of the paper mache bits. Yeah. So um, mixing up gooey batches of stuff that's basically wallpaper paste, or like I said, you can you get a recipe of flour water mix on the internet. There's lots of those kinds of recipes. Uh, we're just using easy pre-made, mixed with a little bit of water, and let it sit 10 minutes is what most of those uh, recommended box uh, directions say. And then I just go and um, kind of paint it on, just kind of. Oh, you kind of cover it first? Well, because kinda... first I don't yeah. like care to get dirty, and then I just mm -hmm. know within a minute or two I'm going to get really dirty. So, okay. and it happens right now when I take the paper, mich uh, paper and just stick it on. Mm -hmm. No, So you're kind of doing a, a underpainting of glue <clears throat> and then putting the paper the on top. And the thing with this step is it's good to get the paper over another minute or two. It's gonna really kind of soak into the fibers of the paper and it's going to adhere more to your armature that you built. And so I think that's probably the most important thing to remember, um, technically speaking, is really kind of, this is like I said, I'm already starting to get messy and mm -hmm. I don't even care about the brush anymore. And I'm just gonna okay. just start slapping it on. Yeah, suddenly it feels wow. like I sneezed oh, I, on my hand. Yeah, yeah it's maybe gross and rings. fun and uh, yeah. Kind of is fun. Kinda. <laughs> 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 Wrinkled nose, it's kind of fun. Yes. <laughs> so that's it. It's just kind of layer after layer after layer. And the more you put on, the more strong it gets. So it just depends on your personality and okay, your patience. So how, how many, okay. So yeah. well, how many, do you have a recommended amount um, of layers? I, I like to build it up to, you know, at least, I would say if you're talking about layers, and they crisscross and overlap, um, 10, oh. 10 layers. Okay, okay, so, so not, that, not, was, that was a question I was gonna ask. Would you recommend almost like a basket weaver, like going one direction, one yeah, that for the first helps. round, and then uh -huh. the second one, like uh -huh. going yeah. up and down on one layer, and then around on the second, and then yeah. up and down? That works for me, because I think that, yeah, criss so like crisscrossing it would help strengthen it. Oh my God, I really like this part. All right. <laughs> oh, I, just, I just reached in with my hands. Wow, good More thing advanced. this food's on sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Somebody thought that through. That's right. Boom. We have paper mache pumpkins and they're dry and they are magically more perfect than when we started them. <laughs> just like Chris said they would be. <laughs> yes. Sorry, I'm reading the classifieds and I got a second here. <laughs> So the next step is painting. Yes, all kinds of ways of going about it. You could dip it into a big gallon of paint. That's one way. <laughs> but going back to the, the original pumpkin we showed her, it has some texture of different kind of uh, layers effect. But, but <laughs> honestly, I, I try to do it really simply. It's really just three colors that made up this. A really dark underpainting oh. color, a dark brown is what I ended up applying to this, then a medium orange, and then kind of a yellow, yellow orange, and then that was it. But what's kind of cool is the texture of the paper, that's what starts bringing out the character. Mm -hmm. This one was uh, in uh, more of the cloth mache, and I used a little bit of this material called gel medium to create some texture on it. But we can still get a fairly interesting achieved effect 
maybe not as extreme as this by doing a couple simple painting techniques. So, so we would do an underpainting first over the whole thing that's yeah. just one kind of base color. If you're, um, yeah, if you're not patient and you just want like a really graphic, you know, uh -huh. yeah. cool little pumpkin that has simple graphic shapes uh, in terms of what you're going to apply as maybe mm -hmm. you're, if you're doing a jack-o'-lantern kind of thing, then I would just, yeah, do it one color, let it dry. Okay. If you want to do it more uh, advanced and a little bit more texture, that sort of thing, then I would suggest going with a, a darker under color mm -hmm. and then a couple layers of colors on top. So I'm going to go with that for this particular one. I'm going to I'm going to paint mine. I think you were going to maybe spray paint or yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna spray Because I figured that would dry pretty quick if yes. I did that, mm -hmm. and then yeah. I could do some texture colories Perfect. things on top of exactly. that. Exactly. And at that point, the sky's the limit. We can probably you know all dream up different ways to go in yeah. about this. I mean, mm -hmm. literally, you can use marker to make lines. You can do probably all kinds of things. So ultimately, I'll go with the technique that was closer to the original um, pumpkin that I made. And the way I simply do it, I in terms of acrylic paint, house paint works really well. Um, but I just got this tube of acrylic and I don't like wasting it because it's kind of expensive. So I just literally just oh, right squirt on. it on. Uh -huh. And um, applause. <laughs> <laughs> and paint it on. That's it. Yeah. Just paint it, let it dry. So that's right. it. This is the underpainting. So okay. it's a brown pumpkin, but it will become more of an orange yellow pumpkin. The thing that I make sure I do, and I'm, you can kind of see me doing already here, is I try to get into every little nuance of all the shapes. We're gonna finish painting these. We're gonna let them dry, and then we're gonna come back and show you the next couple layers. Okay, so our underpainting is dry on our pumpkins and uh, Chris is going to show us now um, about the dry brush he te uh, technique that he was mentioning earlier and um, how we might be able to finish these. I like kind of doing this in simple steps. So three colors, an underpainting color uh, and then two colors, a medium color and then a highlight color mm -hmm. and then you're kind of done. So you got two colors, mm -hmm. mix them up a little bit, keep it simple and use some cardboard palette to just mix them up. Uh, these brushes, by the way, just come from a uh, you know, uh, big box store and they're just cheap throwaways. But I, what I like about these is that they already have kind of a textural bristle to it um, and they'll apply pretty easy. And the wider they are, um, the better for applying paint if you want to just go quick and fast and get that kind of technique. The big thing is get most of the paint off of the brush. Okay. It's a light application rather than going in and just you know really digging into this thing. Go really light at the beginning when you mix your paint on the palette and get most of it off. So that's it. That looks awesome. That's real cool. The other nice thing is where we had to let it dry for about an hour for that underpainting yeah. on this, it's already almost dry to your touch right now as you're awesome. Crazy. applying it. So then I would go to the next lighter color. That's my next step. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You're just getting all dimensional, Trish. Thank We're making yeah. pumpkins. We're making pumpkins. They're legit. They are. We went from wads of newspaper to this, you guys. Thanks for watching this episode of Cocktails and Creativity, Paper Mache. Stay tuned for next week when we'll learn how to level these guys up and make some faces.